So over the last year, we've had several, several of you ask us questions in regards to the mistletoe clinical trial. So we thought we'd just take a couple moments to ask them some of the questions that you've been asking us. So I'll start first with uh, Luis, Dr. Diaz. You and Dr. Pollard must get many requests for your research time. So why did Johns Hopkins decide to do this clinical trial? Well, it's your fault. <laughs> so I'm a conventional doctor. I, I treat with conventional chemotherapies. And you can imagine mistletoe is very far away from what I normally even think about when I think about cancer patients. And I Lise was my patient. And when she started treating herself with mistletoe, I began exploring it a little bit more and more. And in the literature, you start seeing anecdotal one-off studies or one-off patients that were having interesting results. And as a result of Believe Big, more and more of my patients have been on mistletoe. My colleagues' patients have been on mistletoe, thanks to Peter. And I'm starting to see unusual things, like the patients are feeling better, uh, the patients have more energy. And so all of that drove us to want to try to test this conventionally. Uh, well, we're grateful for that. <laughs> Peter, Dr. Hinderberger, you've been using subcutaneous mistletoe in your practice for three decades. It's amazing. You're leading the way. And I would like to ask you, what are, what's your biz, biggest success that you have found with mistletoe? Um, besides kissing, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, well, uh, I just have seen in, in the 30 plus years that I use mistletoe that uh, I can really rely on mistletoe when I see the patients getting better, the quality of life improving, and uh, also the, the, the extension of uh, life that is beyond the statistics of uh, conventional medical oncology. And Louise, why did we change the clinical trial design from subcutaneous to IV now? So, so what you had and what Peter treats with is subcutaneous. We wanted a more aggressive treatment. We wanted to really test this therapy out. And what's allowed to be done in this country is subcutaneous, but we wanted to try it IV, which would be a more powerful way of delivering it. That's great. So Dr. Pollard, share with us the design of phase one and who can participate. Great. So we wanted to design a trial that would look both at killing the tumor cells as well as improving quality of life. And so we're starting with the first phase, which is a phase one, and we invite all solid tumor patients who've had at least one line of therapy in our stage four, like you've heard tonight, and we invite them to participate, and they will be allowed to have infusions three times a week with the hopes that they'll feel better and have their tumor shrink. So where are we currently in the process beginning? <laughs> So currently, as we speak, um, we are submitting our application for an investigational new drug application to the FDA. And so after that process, we will submit to our institutional review board and should be able to enroll patients shortly. That's great. So Peter. <laughs> that's, that's where I go. So Dr. Hindenburger, where will these patients be treated? Um, that's at Johns Hopkins at the Chemo Cancer Center. Okay, great. And so Dr. Diaz, last question. To what extent are you confident that the clinical trial will be successful and worthy of your time and our resources? Well, you know, you never know going into a clinical trial if it's gonna work or not. Um, but with this much patient information, I'm very hopeful. And I think that whether it improves quality of life, whether it shrinks tumors, whether it extends life, it's too early to say for sure. But we're very proud, it's very hopeful. Awesome. Well, we so appreciate you all taking the time to do this clinical trial for us. And more ahead, we'll make sure to give you guys more updates as the trial begins. So thank you so much for being with us here tonight. Thank you.